Well, at least we kind of know what Texas A&M has to do to make it to the college football playoff or at least a bigger bowl game with the rankings coming out. Do we agree or disagree with the location? Let's talk about it. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, everybody, and welcome back into another episode of Locked On Aggies presented by the Locked On Podcast Network. Cole Thompson back here in the driver's seat talking all things Texas A&M. And today, let's go ahead and break down the original initial college football playoff rankings. These are the ones that actually count. And let's also go ahead and look at what Texas A&M has to do ups and downs throughout the entire rankings and who would I like to see Texas A&M play as of right now in the college football playoff. Now, real fast, uh, this episode of Lockdown Aggies is brought to you by McDonald's. Ba 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 ba. I'm loving it. And thank you so much for making us your very first listen every single day. You can check us out on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube.com, and of course, the Locked On Podcast Network at LockedOnPodcast.com. As always, my name is Cole Thompson. I am the host of the show, and I love public feedback. You can follow me on Twitter right down there. Uh, anything you want from the show, what you like, what you hate, what you want to see more of, let me know in the comments section. Let me know what you want, and I will bring it to you. Secondly, Locked on Aggies. Locked on Aggies is your number one source for all things 12th May related content found here on LOP. You can subscribe on iTunes, listen on Spotify, listen every single day at LockedOnPodcast.com and check out all my great written work at AllAggies.com, part of Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation. Now, I know I said in the comments that we we're going to talk, uh, we we're going to talk a little bit about Auburn today. Here's the reality of it. I had a guest lined up. We were going to do a crossover episode with Zach Blackerby of Locked on Auburn. That unfortunately has fallen through and we can't do that. So I need to be able to save something for tomorrow. We're going to go very in depth the next two days on Auburn. So I promise you guys, we are going to talk Auburn, but this is a little bit more important. And we will talk a little bit of Auburn today because of here's the reality of the situation. The college football playoff poll came out last night. Georgia number one, Alabama number two. No real shocker there. Number three, Michigan State. Honestly, no real shocker there. Number four, Oregon, which is a shocker, and I'll explain why that's important in a minute, over Ohio State and Cincinnati coming in at number six. Now, Texas A&M is ranked inside the top 15, which is very, very, very good because of what you do is you kind of control how this thing pans out. You need help from other people, but you do have a little bit of control. Coming in at number 13, which again, it's very similar to what you're seeing in the AP poll, 13-12, 14-13, is the likes of Auburn. Who Texas A&M will face this upcoming weekend. Who Texas A&M will see play. Who Texas A&M will be hosting. And they can get a big time win. This would be the very first time since joining the SEC that Texas A&M would beat Auburn at home. Last season, they beat Auburn at Jordan-Hare. Jimbo Fisher, he's 1-2 and all-time against the Tigers. You want to see him get this big-time win. I believe that that will happen. I believe that if you follow this game plan that we'll talk about tomorrow, this will happen. But let me explain why Auburn being ranked ahead of A&M is important. Let me explain this. Because if you look top to bottom at every single team inside of the college football playoff rankings, if you lost to said team, you were ranked ahead of them. Take this for instance. Iowa lost this past weekend to the likes of Wisconsin. Wisconsin to me is not a top 25 team. They're not a top 25 team whatsoever. But Iowa still is. They're a fringe top 25 team. The reality of it, when you look, Iowa comes in at number 22. Wisconsin comes in at number 21. They're taking that into consideration. Look at the games right ahead of us. 11 and 12. Baylor, Oklahoma State. Who comes in at 11? Who comes in at 12? The team that beat the other team. Oklahoma State 11, Baylor 12. Kentucky, they're 6-2. Lost this weekend to Mississippi State. Kentucky 18, Mississippi State 17. Ohio State, Oregon. Ohio State to me is a better team top to bottom in the roster. Oregon gets the nod. A&M wins this game. A&M not only moves ahead 
of Auburn, which naturally they would. But they would stay ahead of Auburn the remainder of the season. So if that means that Auburn does win out, and that means that Auburn does go 9-3, and A&M goes 10-2, and two, and they beat Alabama in the Iron Bowl, doesn't matter. Because Auburn would have to fall behind the likes of Texas A&M. And the same thing happens with Ole Miss, who Texas A&M will travel to Oxford and play next weekend. If A&M beats Ole Miss and they beat Auburn, no matter what happens, 9-3, and 9-3, and 10-2, and two, it's not based off that. We've already kind of been told it's not going to be based off that because you have a 5-3 and three team ahead of a 6-2 six and, th- six and two team. You have two 5-3 and three teams ahead of two 6-2 and two teams. Every single time that we bring this conversation up, well, Auburn had a bad day. Well, Ole Miss had a bad day. A&M is just bad. Are they? Because the College Football Playoff Committee would say otherwise. The College Football Playoff Committee is saying right now that Texas A&M, if they went out at 10-2, and two, even if it's sloppy wins over LSU, a sloppy win over Ole Miss, a down-to-the-wire, another yellow hammer state field goal have to be made by Seth Small, his wife cheering him on like crazy, that kind of game, A&M will stay ahead. And if A&M stays ahead, they will remain Two things. Number one, the second best team in the SEC West until Alabama falls short. And number two, the first team that gets the bid should Alabama and uh, Georgia win out and go to the college football playoff. That is huge because AM can still go to a New Year's Six Bowl game. But let's just take it a step further. Let's just say that Alabama loses in the Iron Bowl. Let's just say that. Let's just let's go ahead. Let's put that out there. Alabama loses in the Iron Bowl. AM now would go to the likes of the SEC uh, championship and face off against Georgia because if they would be 10 and 2, Alabama would be 10 and 2, and AM holds the tiebreaker. Let's say they beat Georgia. Let's just say, let's just say, let's humor me. I don't know if they will. I, I certainly don't know if they will. But let's just say that they do. And this miraculous season of losing to Arkansas early, losing to Mississippi State early, Zach Calzada plays the game of his life inside of Atlanta. And, you know, he's from Georgia. That'd be such a good storyline. Let's just say they win it. You would then have a win over a top 15 team in Auburn, who likely will still finish top 15. A top 15 team in Ole Miss. Should they beat Liberty, they'll likely be in the they'll be number 15 because they're number 16 right now. Just keep that in mind. They're number 16 right now. And if Auburn loses, they're going to drop. So that's two top 15 wins. Your loss would come to right now if they were to stay undefeated, which I don't think they will, but let's just say that they do, a top 20 team in Mississippi State. Let's just say that somehow the only loss that you see from um, Arkansas the remainder of the season, which very well could happen, it very well could happen because Mississippi State plays them this weekend, comes to our uh, Alabama. They're 8-4. They're probably a top 25 team at the end of the, at the end of the season. At least some were ranked. You beat the number two team in the country, who was number one at the time, and you beat the number one team in the country. You do not think for one second that when you look at that resume, 15, 15, 15, top 25, top 25 are the two losses and beating number one and beating number one twice. You don't think for one second the college football playoff committee is not paying attention to that? Everyone wants to talk about how Auburn controls their own destiny because they have one loss in the SEC. If Auburn loses another game, AM is right there with them. AM is right there with them tied for second place. Auburn right now controls its own destiny because they played less SEC games. And the one loss that they have had came to an opponent that was outside of the conference. The two losses that AM has is inside the conference. AM controls its own destiny. They absolutely still can find a way to get this college football playoff. And I want to talk about that a little bit more and what I think about the SEC as a whole and how this does affect Texas A&M. But keep in mind that A&M coming in at number 14 is not a death sentence. It is still a very good opportunity for Texas A&M to control its own pathway. And the dominoes continue to fall. Tick, 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 tick. A&M can still make the college football playoff. It's never happened before. Two lost teams. But it could happen in 2021. 
Before we go any further, this episode of Locked on Aggies is brought to you by Price Picks. Listen up, fantasy football nerds. I got a deal for you. You like the NFL? Well, this is college fantasy sports made easy. Price Picks gives you more college football props than anyone out there in the world. And you can go bet on star players to group of five players to mid-major players. So whether you want to go bet on Sean Lewis at Syracuse, Zach Calzada at Texas A&M, Desmond Ritter, Malik Willis, go ahead and get those picks in. Prize Picks offers any prop you can think of from yardage to touchdowns, even interceptions thrown. So go ahead and get in. Use the promo code Locked On, and you will receive a 100% instant deposit up to $100 with your very first purchase. Pick up to five over under projections, and you can win 10 times the amount of money you bet. It takes 60 seconds or less to get the bets in, and the money that you will get returned is very easy. It's very safe. You're not going to get duped out of any type of money. Go visit Daily Fantasy Sports right now, every single day. Use it, college sports made easy with prize picks. This episode of Locked on Aggies is also brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's a place where friends and family can come to reconnect. A place where classmates can meet up after a study group, knowing they'll have dependable Wi-Fi and endless supplies of french fries and McFlurries. God, that combination... Win or lose, it's a place that teammates and competitors in the home team can go ahead and come to, recharge, get a nice cool power rate at Dr. Pepper. It's the place you want to look forward to after a long road trip, get an old-fashioned Big Mac in your belly, and enjoy it all the time. I literally go to McDonald's probably once a week. I love their sausage McGriddles. I do. I'm going to be completely honest. Their sausage McMuffin is delicious. It's nutri- it's nutritious for me. It gets me going throughout the day. Their coffee is delectable. And they're bringing back the McRib, which is all time my favorite snack that I've ever gotten from a fast food place. So go ahead and visit McDonald's. Why not go ahead and do this right now? And did you know that you can always say, Locked on Aggie's watch party? Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. I'm loving it. Locked on Aggies presented by the Locked on Podcast Network. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every single day on iTunes, Spotify, the Locked on Podcast Network. Visit us at YouTube.com, subscribe to the channel, and of course at LockedOnPodcast.com. So I said that I was going to talk about some teams that I would really like to face off against if AM does make it to the college football playoff or a New Year's Six Bowl game. So let's just go ahead and say that AM does win out and they make it to the college football playoff. I think what's going to be interesting is that Georgia will still be in. So no matter what, I think that you will see a two SEC team, no matter what. Because if if Georgia wins out, I still think they're in. If Alabama wins out, I still think that they're in. If Georgia beats Alabama, I think that maybe they could make an argument that they're still in. It all depends on what happens in the Big Ten. If Alabama wins, or if A&M wins, or if Auburn wins the SEC championship from the West... I still think that you will see Georgia in. Georgia, I don't think, is going to lose a game during the regular season. It would come at the conference championship. That means that it would come at the hands of the SEC West team. You're not taking them out. So I immediately think that you would be able to see a rematch against Georgia, just like you could possibly see a rematch against Texas A&M down the line if they were ever to go to a 12-team playoff. I absolutely think that. I think also what you would see is a team from the Big Ten immediately get in. I don't know if it's going to be Michigan, Ohio State, Michigan State. One of those three is getting in. At some point, one of those three is getting in. They will represent the Big Ten East. They will beat up on Iowa or Wisconsin in the Big Ten championship game, and they will be in the college football playoff. Now, the question is, who would be that third team that I really would like to see? Do I think it should be Cincinnati? As of right now, no. Cincinnati is a great story. It's an awesome team. They are a good group of five school. Arguably, they're better than the 2017 UCF team. They're 100% better, in my opinion. And they're better coach, in my opinion, than what we saw from the 2017 UCF team. But, the big but, look at the way they played. We talk about Oklahoma, you know, and, I, and I've cropped on Oklahoma multiple times on my regular radio show and on this show. Oklahoma barely beat a two-lane team and a Kansas team, each with one win. It's the same thing. A Navy team with two wins does not make it that compelling, winning by seven points. Struggling against Tulane the entire first half of a game does not make it compelling. You have to play better than that. You absolutely have to play better than that if you're going up against a Tulane team. So when I look at that, I can't put them in there. I don't think an Oregon team is also in there either. And I don't think a Wake Forest team is in there either. So who would I put in? If they were to win out, whoever wins the Big 12, because I've watched every team in the Big 12 that are competing, that's Oklahoma, 
That's uh, that's Baylor and that's Oklahoma State. Two of those teams are not flashy. One of those teams is flashy, but they're inconsistent. But two of those teams, Baylor and Oklahoma State, are hard-nosed, good football teams. Defensively, they can give up. They can give up a battle. They can give up a battle against anybody. Oklahoma. I mean, Oklahoma. I think they can do it against. I think they can do it against Ohio State. I think that Texas A&M would have its fair share of struggles with them, especially against a team like Baylor in its secondary and at their linebacker position. They could have some trouble. I still think A&M would win, but I do think that you would see some struggles there. I think Oklahoma State offensively. They have a great run game, which is an area of weakness for Texas A&M, but they do struggle passing the ball. A strength for Texas A&M, which would make this compelling. One of the better defenses in all of college football, Baylor or the likes of, of course, Oklahoma State, going up against a struggling but somehow surging a little bit offense in Texas A&M would be an amazing matchup, in my opinion. And I think that when you look at the same thing with Baylor's offense, it's the same kind of style. Good run game, inconsistent passing, but they do have ways to win. That would be an amazing matchup. I think if you were able to get that game, especially if it was being able to be played in the Cotton Bowl, imagine the way that that would sell out. Waco College Station, big rivalry from two Big 12, one former Big 12 school, one school that was never appreciated. The success of what we've seen from Dave Aranda in the SEC in the likes of Jerry World. I mean, there are so many different outcomes, storylines, possibilities that you could have with this that you would have to be enticed. That would be who I would want to see in the Final Four. Now, who would I want to see Texas A&M actually play? Now, I'm going to give you some bull projections. Texas A&M right now, by a majority, one, two out, two out, two publications, Bleacher Report and Athlon Sports, do not have them representing the SEC in a New Year's Six Bowl game. They don't have that. Everyone else does. One team has them playing in the Citrus Bowl against Iowa. The other one has them playing in the Citrus Bowl against Penn State. I think both of those matchups are boring. I don't think that when you look at what Iowa's offense can do, AM would just completely suffocate them. I think you'd be able to get a little bit more play against against the Hawkeyes defense with this you know with this AM running attack. It's a boring game. It's bleh. I same thing with kind of Penn State. Penn State does not have a great quarterback situation right now with Sean Clifford. I still think he's playing hurt. I don't think that he's going to be able to play at up to full speed. There's nothing I like right now about those matchups. I do like the matchups that are going to be potentially featured inside of these games. One of which would be in the Fiesta Bowl against the likes of uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh would be the representative of the ACC. They would uh, they'd be one of the representatives of the ACC, or they'd be an at large. But you know, I don't I don't know exactly what they would say. But they do think that Kenny Pickett, Kenny Pickett, and the way that that offense is moving underneath Pat Narduzzi would be fun to watch. And I think from an NFL draft perspective, people would be very interested because Mike Elko would be playing lights out against an NFL style quarterback. Zach Calzada is not NFL ready yet. He's not. And even if he were to declare today, he would be very similar to what you saw with Kyle Allen bouncing around from practice squad to practice squad, maybe somehow, you know, getting onto an active roster for a game. And then maybe three or four years down the line when he probably should have stayed in college, you'd be able to have that same thing. That's personally what I think would happen when you look at how Zach Calzada plays. Kenny Pickett, whole different story. Kenny Pickett is the most improved quarterback in college football. To me, Texas A&M needs a challenge at the quarterback position. That would be really enticing to watch. And the other matchup, it is still the Fiesta Bowl. I do believe right now, the way that things are playing out, the way it all seems, Texas A&M's best at-large bid to get into a playoff game, not representing the SEC, because Alabama, still in the Sugar Bowl, we could have that conversation, to represent at an at-large bid, would be a, the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. It'd be against Wake Forest. This would be a really fun matchup. And this would be one that I think would absolutely give AM all the confidence in the world. Wake Forest's defense is bad. They're not good. They're very mundane, very middle tier average defense. Their offense, though, can score. Their offense can score a ton. So what do you see? You see a matchup between one of the best scoring offenses in the country against one of the best scoring defenses in the country. On top of that, you get a matchup to where you get to watch what happens with Wake Forest's defensive line, which has been atrocious on third down against the 1-2 combination of Devon A. Chain and Isaiah Spiller. 
This should be a game where I think Zach Calzada can figure out his flaws. He can figure out his kinks. He could feel comfortable going into next season if Jimbo were to name him the starter. I really, really, really like what I've seen from Wake Forest this season. I think it'd be a fabulous matchup. Those would be my two picks for Texas a in the face. Pitt to go up against an NFL-style quarterback or to go up against one of the top scoring offenses in the country with the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. And I do think that ultimately right now, until we know for sure that Alabama is locked and loaded, they are 100% in the college football playoff, I think that they're probably getting the best bet to be the Fiesta Bowl. That would be probably the best bet. And every single outlet, Action Network, collegefootballnews.com, all these different companies are agreeing. Fiesta Bowl feels like Texas A&M's to lose. This episode of Locked on Aggies is brought to you by Built Bar. Did you know that Built Bar is not only delicious, but it's also nutritious? And don't worry, if you, if you haven't had one yet, you're going to have to try it to believe it. Most protein bars are chalky, waxy, just covered in some type of material that is disgusting. Built Bar is covered in 100% real chocolate. It's soft and easy to chew, and it's enjoyable every single bite with so many unique flavors. So whether you're a coconut, a raspberry, a mint brownie, a salted caramel, a double chocolate, cherry barcia person, they have unique flavors, and they're always coming out with new ones. So go check out BuiltBar.com for the brand new flavor of the month every single month. Stop by BuiltBar.com as well and type in LOCK15 for 15% off your very first purchase. That's LOCK15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. Stop eating the salty sweets and enjoy a treat that will meet your needs. Built Bar from BuiltBar.com. College football season is in mid-swing. The NFL season is in mid-swing. And we have NBA back. That means bets are at an all-time high. So go to the one place we love and the one place we trust. That's BetOnline.ag. BetOnline.ag gives you the best buyouts, the best bets, and the best wages every single day. When you go visit them at BetOnline.ag, use the promo code LOCKEDON to receive a 100% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Get daily picks, wagers, odds in UFC, in NHL, in NBA, in college football, in the college football playoff news, and much, much more. Stop seeing the sidelines and get into the action right now with BetOnline.ag. Your online sportsbooks experts. Locked on Aggies presented by the Locked on Podcast Network. All right, to close out the show, I got some good news for you. I was able to go listen to yesterday the athletic director of TCU speak of what's going on in Fort Worth. Gary Patterson is out after 20 plus years as the head coach. After being there for over 24 years, he has a statue built of him. He is the most all-time successful coach in program history. I think actually he's like the second or third most in all different sports with 181 wins. I mean, he's done a fantastic job. Nobody's going to deny that. But they're looking for another head coach. Here is the stipulation that they really want to go with. Number one, they want to go offense. So that's a good sign for anyone who's like, oh no, is Mike Elko going to go? Is Mike Elko going to leave? They want to go offense. So the fact that they want to go offense automatically kind of leans Mike Elko's name on the outside looking in. The other thing they want to do is they want to go with a proven head coach. They are looking to go with a proven head coach. So that means Sonny Dykes, Jeff Trailer, Jamie Chadwell, uh, Billy Napier. Those are the type of names you're going to see. I don't know if you're going to see a Jeff Levy. I don't know if you're going to see a Dan Lanning, a Mike Elko, a, um, a Kendall Bryles. Those are names that you're not probably going to see on the list. And that's okay. Because with Texas A&M, you still get Mike Elko. He gets to stay for another year. He probably is going to get a pay raise because, well in doubt, he should. And he's going to be able to continue to help you recruit. That is a big plus. The third thing, Texas ties. They want Texas ties. Now, the good news is, and this is, I guess, a slap in the face, I guess, I guess towards Elko, he does have Texas ties because if he's worked for the University of Texas A&M for years and years and years, he's been there since uh, 2018, but he's not a native Texan. So he would have to bring in Texan staff members. That would mean somebody from Texas A&M would have to come with him. That would probably mean he'd have to go find somebody who's in the you know Mountain West or the uh, Sunbelt Conference who has Texas ties that could help him recruit immediately. He'd have to go after somebody maybe at the SEC schools and make them an offensive coordinator. That way they'd be able to help out in recruiting. Those are all things he had to tie in. So it doesn't feel like right now Mike Elko is a top name at TCU. Good for Texas A&M. Maybe bad for Mike Elko because if he's deserving of being a head coach. But at the end of the day, this is an Aggies podcast. So we want to talk about the positives with Texas A&M. And the biggest positive is not losing your top recruiter. 
He doesn't feel like he's going to be a name in the running. I don't think that he is absolutely going to be a name in the running for Texas Tech. I can automatically take his name out there. So the question would be, where else would he go? I don't think that right now there's an opportunity for him anywhere, which is very good for Texas A&M's defense for another season. And I do think that he will hold out for another Power 5 job. That's going to be the key. I don't think he would go to like a Sun Belt unless it was Coastal Carolina or something like that to where he'd be able to turn it around. I think that maybe the one team that I'd be interested in seeing is if Dave Clawson were to get a bigger job like Miami, would he go back to Wake Forest? That would be like the one job I would be like, eh, I could maybe see it happening. They need a defensive-minded coach. The offense is stifling on all cylinders. But until Dave Clawson leaves, that's like really not a conversation. So good news for AM fans everywhere out there. It doesn't look like Mike Elko is going anywhere. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Aggies. Make sure you're following us on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson and at Locked on Aggies. I'll be back tomorrow to break down more of Auburn, Texas A&M. We'll go all in depth about Bo Nix. We'll talk about the defense. I'll talk about Derek Mason. I was actually able to get a really good quote from Jimbo Fisher at the press conference this week. I really want to dive into what he said about Derek Mason's defensive front. So we'll talk all that and much, much more on tomorrow's show. See you then. And remember, kick him, y'all.